three, two, one. What you're seeing right now is a machine that's producing art. There's no paint or brushes though, just a single thread wound around multiple nails in a particular order. And when it's done, all those thin lines should hopefully depict an image like this. But how is this possible? How is it that we start with some input image, somehow convert it using an algorithm, and get string art as an output? Well, in this video, I'll be showing you some of the beautiful math that has been used to make such an algorithm. So let's get started. Let's start by stating the rules of the game. We have a circular white canvas of, let's say, radius r, and we have n nails around the edge of this canvas. Now by just drawing straight black lines between these nails, our job is to recreate the best possible copy of an input image. How can we do this? Well, every image we're going to be dealing with can be broken down into a rectangular grid of pixels. Each of these pixels will have a specific color, and that color is represented by three different numbers, one for red, R, one for green, G, and one for blue, B. For example, this yellow pixel has an R value of 255, a G value of 255, and a B value of zero. We don't want this because our thread is black and our canvas is white, so we'll have to suck the life out of this image and convert it into grayscale. Now the grayness of each pixel is represented by a single number between 0 and 1. 0 if it's pure white, and 1 if it's pitch black. And there we go. Now we can quantify what our image looks like. Now let's discuss how to model each line of string. One way to do this is to use the same grid as before and simply make all of the intersecting pixels pitch black and leave all the others white, like this. Note that there are only two values needed to define this line. A starting nail angle, which I'll call psi1, and an ending nail angle, which I'll call psi2. And since there are only n nails along the circumference of the canvas, that means there are only a finite number of lines we can draw. And it turns out that the total number of lines is n choose 2, which is n times n minus 1, all divided by 2. So what this means is that we will need to find a way to store each set of pixel values for every combination of lines that we have. And there we have it. Now we have a way to quantify each line in terms of pixel values and the input image. Now we're ready to compare them. Now if we're extremely lucky, then maybe some combination of these lines will happen to perfectly resemble the image. This times 1 effectively means that we include the line 1, and this times 1 means we include line 2, and this times 0 means we don't draw line 3. But how do we figure out which lines to include and which ones to exclude? In other words, how do we find the binary values x1, x2, x3, etc.? Well, here's a little trick we can exploit. What we can do is we can store our rectangular array of pixels as a vector of pixel values, like this. Now I know this seems quite arbitrary right now, but let me show you why this is helpful. Well, we can do this trick for all lines and the image pixels. And so what we're left with is some vector I'll call a1 times the binary scalar x1, plus some other vector I'll call a2 times x2, plus another vector a3 times x3, and so on and so on. And if we're lucky, this linear combination should perfectly equal the image vector, which I'll call b. And so it seems all we need to do to discover what lines we need to make is to solve the equation a1x1 plus a2x2 plus a3x3 plus on and on and on is equal to b. Well, we can put this equation in matrix form. All the vectors a1, a2, a3, etc. will go in this matrix I'll call capital A. And x1, x2, x3 will go in this vector I'll call X. And we have this vector B on the other side. 
And so now all we need to do is solve for x by inverting a. Sounds easy, right? Well, I want to say yes, but since I know a few mathematicians will be watching this video, I think I should come clean. In truth, we don't actually want to solve ax is equal to b. In fact, that might not even be possible, since there may be no combination of lines x that could ever perfectly represent the image b. What we actually want to do is solve for the string art representation, AX, to be as close to the image B as possible. Mathematically, this can be written as solve for the minimum of the two norm of AX minus B squared. Now, for those of you who aren't scared away by this formula, then I've made another video showing you how to solve this minimization problem. The end result is that x is equal to p inv a times b, where this term is called the pseudo inverse of a and can be calculated on a computer very quickly. And we're done. We now have an algorithm to convert our image b into our vector x, which tells us which lines to draw. Let's see the result. Ooh, that's not good. What happened? Where did this go so wrong? After a lot of hard research, I managed to figure out that there were two big problems. The first problem is due to how poorly we modeled our lines. When the string is angled diagonally, even squares that ever so slightly touch the line are included. This is a problem because we're artificially making slanted lines darker than horizontal or vertical lines. Also, each black string probably doesn't appear perfectly black to the human eye from afar. It'll probably look more like a light gray. So let's fix this. Let's plot the cross-sectional thickness of a line T on the x-axis and the darkness on the y-axis. Currently, we're modeling our line darkness profile as a box function. That means it's zero white beyond some threshold and one black at the center of the line. If each individual line looks light gray, then we can fix this by lowering this height of this box to 0.2 instead. Okay, good. We can fix the other issue by smoothing out this step function into something like this. Is this the best darkness profile of our line? What about this? Or this? There are lots of options, but after a bit of trial and error, I found this profile worked very well. The result is a 2D surface, where the Z value here describes the darkness of any line on our canvas. This seems promising, but let's see what it looks like when we sample it from a rectangular grid of discrete points. Hey, that looks much better. Now the other big problem was our pseudo-inverse technique. It's producing values of x which are definitely not 1 or 0. This is a problem because either there is or there is not a line. There's no way I can possibly draw negative 6.3 lines. Sure, I could just round these numbers to the nearest 1 or 0 or something like that, but it won't be enough. Somehow, I need my algorithm to perform this minimization subject to the constraints that x is equal to 0 or x is equal to 1. Now, there are many different algorithms out there to tackle such an optimization problem. However, since x is so big, I found the best way to accomplish this was using a greedy algorithm. Briefly put, it works like this. Start from some arbitrary nail and then analyze each of the other n minus 1 nails for the one that will best minimize the error between the image and the blank canvas. Then do it again, starting at the other nail, noting that we only need to check n minus 2 nails now since we already drew a line with the first one. Then do it again. The process should go on until the error between the image and the current string representation can't be reduced anymore with any line. And that's basically it. By locally solving for the best line at each iteration, we've not only managed to find a decent solution to our constrained minimization problem, but we've also got, for free, an ordered list of nails to wrap our string around. 
This means we can make this entire artwork all with a single thread. Now, if you're also interested, I've managed to improve on this algorithm by making it much faster with a completely different method using the fast Fourier transform. But that's a talk for another video. Thanks for watching.